Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia. Welcome back to the episode of our Art of War guide series where we cover everything battle related for Total War Three Kingdoms. And starting this week, we'll be starting a new segment here uh, covering the bandit factions as we're about to embark on a Let's Play featuring Zheng Jiang. So it's a perfect opportunity to look at some of the character guides we have done in the past covering the Han generals, especially the generic Han generals, and shift those attentions to the bandit variety because ever since the bandit revamp, there has been changes to minor things with bandit classes. They're still the same class structure as the Han factions, as in we have sentinels, champions, commanders, strategists, and vanguards, but there are minor variations between the generic bandits. So for this series, we'll be taking a look at those differences and covering them. And for those of you who are still confused about the generic Hun characters, we have character guides on the channel, so definitely go check those out. For this one, we're mainly focused on the bandit varieties and their key differences with their Hun counterpart. And starting things off, we'll be covering the Sentinel class. And if we look at in-game, the Sentinel class has one unique character for the bandits, and that is Yan Bai Hu. Aside from him, all the bandit sentinels are generic characters that belong to one of these five generic background traits and they could be assassins, fugitive officers, thieves, saboteurs, or tribal exiles. And if we take a look at these five, each one will provide a various bonus, whereas most of the Hun generals will provide bonus that are faction-wide, most of the bandit focus will either be on the character themselves or for their retinue or their army, as bandits in general tend to be more battle focused, therefore they make a great component for our Art of War guide series. Now looking at these, we see one common trend among the five, and that is everyone has 10 expertise points, because we are talking about sentinels after all, so they follow the rule of 15 points for generic characters, and 10 of those points will always go to expertise. The other five will go to either cunning, authority, or resolve. And most of them are boosting cunning, which is actually quite nice because there are quite a few band of strategies that revolve around hidden range units. And having a bit of cunning to boost that ammo count is definitely helpful. For the other two, Tribal Exiles 5 Resolve is probably the most useful for combat because you get more health on that. The 5 point authority for morale is probably the weakest one for a Fugitive Officer. But that doesn't mean Fugitive Officer is not good because if you look at the bonus, you get 10% recruitment cost discount for this army. So that is actually quite strong because you can stack these. You can get up to 3 of them if you have 3 Fugitive Officers and that entire army will be 30% cheaper to recruit, assuming you don't have any additional bonuses from your court. So that is quite a nice boost for the early game or even in the late game when you're recruiting more expensive units. Aside from Fugitive Officers, the strongest one out of these build at the beginning would have to be the Assassin. Because you start out with stock. Now there is a way to get stock on your Sentinels through the skill tree but you're not necessarily going to start with that skill for most of your characters. Therefore, if you are of assassin background, you automatically have stock enable. Now, stock enables you to traverse through any terrain and remain hidden. It is excellent for sneaking up on enemies without triggering their range attacks or even any type of reaction from them. It's also great for taking towers because if you sneak up to an empty doorway where the tower is undefended, they won't see you even as you capture them. In addition to that, you also get 25% boost to your own melee armor piercing damage. That is quite nice because armor piercing damage is the damage type that you will prefer to have because as the name suggests, it's armor piercing, therefore there will be no percentage loss to enemy armor, so this 25% is directly increased onto the amount of damage you can expect to do to the enemy. Aside from these two, the others are slightly weaker. Saboteur is probably the weakest one here. It adds one turn of building conversion time in local commandery. So this might feel a bit confusing uh, at first glance, but how this would work is imagine having bandit buildings in a county because they are special from the Han variety. Once you have constructed them, if you lose the settlement, then the enemy retakes the county. 
they have to convert the building back to a Han variety because they can't take advantage of the bandit income as well as the building chain. That's building conversion. Usually building conversion are set to one turn. Here, for each saboteur you have standing in the local commandery, that turn is increased by one additional turn. So technically you can force the enemy to spend four turns, five turns, as many saboteurs as you can put on the field, because there is no limit. This is not an own army bonus. This is just as long as the general is standing in the commandery, you can extend this and you can pretty much prevent the enemy from converting the building. It's neat and interesting, but it's not useful. So saboteur is definitely the weakest of these five. Thief will reduce the enemy loot or military supplies if you're not a bandit faction, and it will increase your own loot. So basically it decreases enemy army's loot in local commandery and increases your own army's loot. It's only two points, so it's not a big deal. It's not a huge swing. Uh, you pretty much get this plus loot effect from cunning anyway, so it kind of synergizes quite well. It's useful if you're hoping to get an army that will expend loot every turn to boost your economy. Aside from that, it's really rather pointless. Tribal Exile probably has the most tangible bonus, 10% speed boost for Shock Cavalry. This is only for own retinue, so you're technically forced to recruit Shock Cavalry onto a Sentinel unit, which might not be the best idea since you don't necessarily have the necessary boost from your skill tree to make the most out of those Shock Cavalry. But sometimes shock cavalry is just good, so you might go for it, and 10% speed is nothing to laugh at. It definitely helps with mobility. I think the most tangible way to visualize speed is with increase in speed, you take less volleys from enemy range units before you clash into them. Therefore, you take less damage, and also your speed times your mass is your impact damage. Therefore, you have more knockback, so that also helps as well. So that's generally the introduction of the five generic Sentinel backgrounds. Now we're going to take a look at the skill tree of the Sentinel for both the Han faction and compare them to the variation for the Bandit faction, as we have the two example skill tree here for generic characters that belong to both. And right away you can see some of these icons are rather different and we'll walk through the changes one by one. First off, as with any classes, between Bandit and Han factions, there will always be one active ability that is changed. And the active ability that is changed is always the one on the right hand side. So the Bandit ability here is Poison Volley, and the Han ability here is Tempered Deflection. Tempered Deflection, once activated, will give you 50% range block chance for a range of 50 meter for all units within that range for 20 seconds. Poison Volley is very similar to another unique ability in the game called Hell of Arrows, where you will shoot four volleys of arrows at the enemy. Each volley will deal 500 range damage, and you will decrease the enemy range attack rate and the melee attack rate and apply poison to them, which will deal 90 damage over time over 30 seconds, which is the active time for this poison. 60 second cooldowns, only four use per battle. Now, how does this compare with the legendary Hell of Arrows? If we look at the Hell of Arrows stat, the Hell of Arrows is actually a lot better. And it makes sense because Hell of Arrows is unique to only two characters in the game, I believe, and both of them are unique. Whereas Poison Volley is available on every single Sentinel that is Bandit in the game. So if you are a generic Bandit Sentinel, you have Poison Volley. So you pretty much match what those two unique generals can do. But the damage is much less. You can see that Hail of Arrow does 1.5k range damage, base times 10. Uh, basically, 10 of those arrows will come out per volley, and technically you have 4 volley per use, so you actually deal 4 times that damage. You apply the same attack rate debuff, but you also decrease the enemy charge speed by 25% and delete 500 points of melee charge bonus. So essentially, you suppress the enemy charge there will be no charge bonus that will get to you. Even if you double charge bonus on some of the strongest shock cavalry units, you're barely over 500. With some extreme bonuses, I think I seen 590 as the highest ever. So minus 500 means there will be no charge applied to you. So you kind of delete enemy charges if you just fire this into the enemy line before they hit you. Poison Volley doesn't have this but there will be poison applied, so there's continuous damage with Poison Volley. Poison Volley is really good for spreading it out among the entire enemy line, 
because as long as one of those 40 arrows, because it's 10 arrows per volley, four volleys per use, and there's four use actually, so there's multiple arrows, but 40 arrows per use, as long as those arrows touch a unit within a retinue, the whole retinue becomes poisoned. So the damage ticks quite nicely across all the units in that retinue, and that's where most of the casualties from poison volley will hit. You won't see it as effectively as Hail of Arrow because the poison kills will not be counted on your general. So you're actually missing out on quite a bit of experience, but it is super powerful in game. And if you can time out the poison uh, by spacing out the poison time, you can actually deal massive damage to the enemy. So quite a strong ability. And that's why we pick the Sentinel to start things off because Sentinel Bandits are just amazing in the game. Now, aside from this active ability, there's quite a few passive abilities that are different, mainly the one that has to do with administrative or faction-wide bonuses. As you can see, Intuition, which grants mainly 15% income from industry when you're an administrator, becomes Unpredictability, which gives the same expertise bonus, enables guerrilla deployment for own retinue, which is new, instead of the evasion to capture post-battle, and decrease two morale point for all enemy armies in local county. Now, this is stackable, as in if you have 10 generals with unpredictabilities in local county, they will decrease 20 points of morale. So technically, you could just run an army or multiple armies of unpredictability generals and just have one of them attack the enemy and any men inside the enemy army who are not unbreakable will probably route on command because you can probably stack a night battle in there. So 15 points are gone there. And then if you kill off, let's say 20, 30 points of morale, pretty much everyone's going to route. And you can win battles that way in a very interesting manner where you don't actually fight. You just enter battle, morale debuffs, you win. That's why this value is so low because of this possibility. Imagine this being negative five, then if you stack, let's say nine of them, three armies of just nine generals, no retinues, you free armies, you can delete 45 points of morale, and with night battle, 60 points at the start of battle. There's really no enemy that can withstand that type of morale punishment. So to prevent that, it's only minus two to make this strategy rather difficult to pull off, but I think it's still possible in the late game. It might be a very fun way to use this, even though you have to invest a lot of army count to make it work. So that's unpredictability. Then moving on, we have scholarship, which is mainly used for the 40% income from commerce. This is now replaced with craft, which gives you three wooden stakes for own army per battle and caltrops. So caltrop is the main selling point here because it enables it for the whole army since we don't have this for the bandit reform tree. Caltrop was added pretty late into the game and it was given into the red reform tree for the Han factions. Other subcultures don't have access to this very neat ability for all your melee units. And this is actually quite strong. Caltrop actually kills a lot of units and also slows them down. So if you have a bundled up turtle formation, a super strong Imperial defender, Throw some Caltrop on them. One unit of Caltrop can probably kill a quarter of that retinue. So it's very devastating. So having this ability to enable that is pretty critical for bandit armies just to have that ability to use that. The wooden stake is not that useful just because it's very hard to trick the AI to actually walk through them since the deployment zone of the wooden stake is only on your deployable side. Maybe for siege defenses where you have narrow hallways, you have better control over where you can apply these wooden stakes, but in general, not as useful. So as you can see right off the bat, the two most useful administrator skills are gone from Sentinels. So if you're playing bandit factions, maybe get a Sentinel from the Han side to be your administrator because all your administrative traits for your bandit classes are gone in place for more battle-oriented skills. And continuing that trend, Diligence is replaced with Stealth. So Diligence was the one that provides the own retinue with five points of melee evasion for all purple infantry or melee infantry. You also get a faction-wide bonus of 25 bonus experience per unit per season. So this is a way to slowly level up your retinues even if they're not fighting. It's very slow. It's not even worth it. Stealth, on the other hand, enables stock on the general, not on the retinue. 
So this is the ability that I mentioned that you don't need a assassin background to get stock for your sentinels, but you need this skill. So if you have assassin, you can skip this skill because you see here it enables stocks twice for some reason. It also gives you plus three cover gain per turn when spying. So it's good for spying, it's good for stock. Other than that, it's actually terrible. So most of the time you can skip this skill. Stock is very useful for stealing gates and for setting yourself up for a very good poison volley. Because if you have stealth, you can sneak up perpendicular to the enemy line and lay out a very nice poison volley across their entire line without them reacting to you or moving away from you. So that's the case where you might consider it. But overall, you might not want to invest in this one because there's other ways to get stock, like I mentioned with the background. Then continuing on the bottom row here, we have stability being replaced with mutability. So stability unlocks assignment and some public order for administrator. Mutability is quite interesting in that it is a local command bonus, so you don't need to be administrator to trigger this or underling in the case of bandits. You get plus five public order in local commandery and minus five public order if you're an enemy commandery. So this can be used to trigger rebellions. If you add on the fact that you can raid with bandits, or minus 18 public order, you can actually send out a mutability raid party to decrease enemy public order by 33 points a turn. So that's actually pretty strong because you can trigger some rebellions, maybe overthrow some counties without actually declaring war because raiding is not a declaration of war. They will hate you, but they won't declare war on you just yet. And you can maybe flip the county to a yellow turban one and then take it from them afterward. So it's kind of farming rebels in enemy territory. Kind of interesting and definitely a good replacement for stability, which is not as good if you compare this uh, with mutability, since you do get the plus five public order and you don't even need to be the administrator. And it's a mobile plus five public order. Then lastly, on the bottom row, we have understanding being replaced by evasiveness. Understanding gives you another assignment and plus one starting rank for all recruit. So you can see that you're losing a lot of assignments as well. This is a faction wide bonus. This one's replaced with a plus five melee evasion for melee infantry for own retinue. So technically this is the diligence buff, which is the only synergizing buff from the Han skill tree with purple infantry. So you're getting that back. And you're also getting the 25% chance to evade capture post battle that was on intuition. You're getting that back as well. So you're getting two of the old skill that were slightly battle related back on evasion and you're losing one the assignments and plus one rank for all recruits faction wide. Now that's not it because there's one skill on the top that's also replaced and this is composure. This is a key change and this is not a change for the better in my opinion. Composure you get fire arrows for your archers and for your multi bolt crossbow siege weapon. You also get night battle. Ruthlessness gives you poison arrows for own retinue. That's applied to all archers, but not multi-bolt crossbow siege weapon. You get plus 10% range damage for own army. So it's kind of like the bonus you get from zeal, which is also, or precision, which is the skill right next to it. So you're technically getting range damage boost. Uh, this is base, I think, for precision and armor piercing. But regardless, you're getting a nice boost of damage for own army. It's stackable. Three of these will be 30%, which is quite sizable for an archer comp. And you're getting poison arrow. Now, the issue here is that poison arrow is not as good as fire arrow. Both arrow does continuous damage. So technically, if you're maximizing the damage of your fire arrows, you should be firing, stopping, firing, stopping. But usually you don't do that because it has morale damage, which is nice, and because you can light up the environment. So if it's a forest, you light up the trees, continuous burn at all times, even when you're not firing. If they have towers, you can burn those down. If they have four towers, you burn those down. So basically, it's very useful to destroy towers. You can't get that with poison arrows. Poison arrows has one advantage in that it can apply suppression on the enemy, so they'll lose some speed, and that part is nice. But Aside from that, being not able to destroy towers is rather weak and not being able to trigger night battle is super weak because now you're giving up about 15 points of morale that you would have had otherwise. So this is a tough trade-off in my opinion. It's not terrible, ruthlessness is still wonderful skill, but maybe for the army you need to figure some other way to enable night battle or else not having night battle 
is definitely a pain for the bandit faction. So that's going to do it for us for this quick guide about the bandit sentinels. We'll be coming back next week to cover another class and so forth. So for the next four weeks, we'll be finishing this series up and then we'll talk about some of the bandit units and how to use them in battle. So hopefully you guys enjoy this quick guide and see you guys next week. Bye.